My name is Jochen Topf. I've been uh, a long-term con contributor to OpenStreetMap. And um, today, today I'm going to tell you um, how sausages are made. Um, so OpenStreetMap, um, uh, more people coming in. Um, OpenStreetMap maps are like sausage. Uh, they are really great. And but if you look behind it, um, how they are made, maybe you don't want to know. It's a bit icky sometimes, but somehow it works. Somehow we get these great maps out of it. And, um, well, I'm maybe talking about some of those icky things. Maybe I'm not so icky at all. So at first, the first thing obviously you need is uh, lots of people um, to make a map. And um, now that I'm, I've given you the image of uh, turning people into sausages, uh, <laughs> That's not what I meant. You need a diverse group of people with lots of different motivation, different goals. Um, and um, some of them are interested more in, in local stuff. This is some kind of village somewhere in, in Germany um, where somebody really mapped everything to the last detail. Others uh, are uh, interested more in thematic maps. This is um, public transport maps somewhere in Germany. Um, then there are those that are more intrinsically motivated. This uh, map, if, can somebody tell me what that is? Um, I think two, 2006 or seven. that's Berlin. At that time, you really had to be motivated just for the fun of working with this open street machine, just, just uh, um, uh, working with the software, trying out things, because you couldn't use a map for anything, really. Um, and there are those that are more extrinsically motivated, um, like the cyclists. Uh, maybe you heard uh, Richard Ferris talk. Um, they want to go out and cycle, and they want to have the cycle uh, routes in there. Um, and then there are the slightly obsessed uh, people. Um, that's a park in uh, Hanover, Germany. Um, um, and we need those people who do who sort of go beyond um, what, what others are doing for, for um, all, all the details. And you think that all these diverse people, everybody is, would, pulling, would be pulling in different directions, but somehow um, it's the other way around. They find themselves together, they bring everybody, uh, brings in their part of the, uh, the big picture into this one map. And um, so, of course, there's all these collaboration going on as all wiki there's chess as forums uh, meetups um, conferences like this where the, the people meet and uh, but mostly they talk and sometimes they fight um, but how how do, do they decide anything how do they um, turn the discussions that they have into uh, a, a global whole um, so I'm looking at an example here. Um, how do you map an ice cream parlor? You um, uh, found somewhere a place where you can get ice cream at the side of the road, and uh, you want to put this into OpenStreetMap. And of course, um, there was a proposal for that. Um, somebody made that in 2010 and, he's, and said, uh, let's uh, tag this as amenity ice cream. And there were um, 47 people um, in, uh, uh, who, uh, who voted on this uh, proposal, 27 said yes, 20 said no, which is actually quite good for a proposal um, for, for any voting in OpenStream. Normally it's like 10 people or maybe 12 people who, who vote on these things. Um, so the result was approved. Um, but if you look at the statistics, you see it doesn't really matter at all. Um, the area between the two lines that was the discussion time and um, when this proposal was discussed. And there's not much different in the differences in the lines that you can see here for um, uh, shop equals ice cream or amenity equals ice cream or the yellow line is um, cuisine ice cream that you can tag uh, on top of a cafe tag or a restaurant tag. Um, because um, these 50 voters they can't tell the 50,000 mappers or 500,000 mappers or how many we have now um, what to do. They um, can discuss this, but this vote isn't binding. Um, so this is just a random ice uh, cream uh, parlor uh, near where I live. 
and it's not tagged as amenity ice cream at all. Uh, it's tagged as a as a cafe. Um, and um, uh, if you look around, um, you'll you'll find out that um, uh, you don't see much uh, of the of the amenity ice cream on on the maps. So the mappers um, they don't vote in these proposals. Um, there's a nice nice side thing, and if if you're interested. In, in discussing things on the wiki, you can do that, but the real action is somewhere else. Um, the mappers vote with their action, with their work, and with their data in, in the end. Um, so one reason w why it works that way is um, it doesn't mean if some, something gets voted in, it doesn't mean that it appears magically on the map. I mean, the ice cream now, five years after this vote still doesn't appear on the map. Uh, shop ice cream appears as a little dot. There isn't even a, a special icon for that. Um, so what people do is, as I mentioned, they um, tag it uh, as a cafe if they want to see it on the map. So these discussions that we have, be it on the wiki, be it in meetings like this or whatever, it's all nice and they're important to find out about all the things that are going on. Um, but they are not binding. They are not binding for the mappers uh, who do the work, and they are not binding for the cartographers or other people who use the data. Um, they, everybody can decide what to put in OpenStreetMap, and everybody can decide themselves what to take out of OpenStreetMap. Um, so uh, there is no way of forcing anybody in a volunteer organization um, to, to do anything. Maps is what helps the mappers decide what they want to map and how they want to map it. This map is uh, uh, a few years old open piston map. They, that was the first map uh, that showed ski uh, slopes with the different difficulty levels and different colors and all of that. And basically, this guy decided um, how the tagging was supposed to be because he put it on the map in that way. Nobody else did that. So if you want to have your local ski slope or whatever um, on the map, you ha had to do it that way. Um, I suspect some there were probably some changes over the years. I haven't looked at the details. Um, but this is how uh, the ski slope mapping got started. Just one person creating a map. Now there are several that uh, use that same information. So the mappers. Um, look for the data that they entered in all those maps. Um, they also talk to cartographers and to other users of the data and tell them, I want to have this special thing on there. And it's especially the thematic mappers who are interested in, in a very special, uh, specialized field. They are often quite vocal and they run around pressuring the cartographers to have this little one little extra thing and then there's another one little extra thing and we want this on the map and this on the map and um, sometimes they get so frustrated that they start their own map and this is how it's supposed to work um, and the users of the data on the other side the cartographers or the um, programmers who do routing algorithms or whatever they use the data that's available because they want to start out with something that works um, and then um, they basically tell the mappers how to map um, through hopefully a, also some documentation, but um, in many cases just uh, by showing uh, the result on the map and uh, maybe they become mappers themselves and add those things uh, they need. So there is this feedback loop uh, going on um, where the mappers and the users of the data um, help each other out to produce this great OpenStreetMap map that we have. Here's another example. If you um, have mapped this lovely bridge, uh, the Pont de Langla, um, and you want to add the name there um, at, uh, in OpenStreetMap, so um, w what are you going to do? You look around and maybe a little bit, and you find out um, there could be two different tags that uh, 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 it might be the right way to tag the, uh, the bridge name. One is bridge underscore name. The other is bridge colon name. So which one is it? Um, 
let's ask TagInfo. Uh, TagInfo is uh, a service that um, aggregates a lot of information from different parts of sort of the OpenStreetMap universe at one place. Um, disclaimer, I'm the author of that tool. Um, thank you. Um, if you haven't seen it before, go to taginfo.openstreetmap.org and, and try it out. So one feature uh, it has is it can compare tags or uh, keys. Um, so in this case, I'm comparing bridge colon name and bridge underscore name. Um, and you can see it, um, the bridge colon name has a description which comes from the wiki. So there is a wiki page about that. Uh, the bridge underscore name doesn't have a description. It has no wiki uh, uh, description. Um, and you can see, you look at the statistics and see, okay, there's quite a lot of bridge underscore name, but um, more, about twice as many uh, bridge colon names. Um, you can uh, look at the little map on the bottom, you see it's um, roughly the same dis distribution over the, uh, over the world. So there's, um, sometimes you see different tags have, are used in specific areas. People use that tag in other areas, they use that tag. Um, you get all this information together and um, you, you, you'll find some other things. So I, for instance, uh, on the projects tab, um, you see that Nominatim, the search, the OpenStream search engine, actually knows about the bridge colon name tag and it doesn't know about the bridge underscore name tag. So if you want your bridge name to show up in the search or be searchable, then you better use bridge colon name. Um, so uh, Tagon brings this information all together so that you can decide uh, then based on your priorities um, which tag you want to use. You don't have to use the one uh, that's more popular. Maybe in your special case, the other one is better or a, a totally different tag. You still um, get to decide, but you can find uh, all this information there. And TagInfo is used. TagInfo has about 5,000 users per day. Um, about 2,000 of those uh, just come uh, through the wiki. If you, uh, You've probably seen that on the wiki. There's this... Um, little um, boxes on the tag and key pages with some statistics. This is fed from tag info into the wiki page. And so about uh, 2,000 of the 5,000 uh, hits um, come from that. There's about 2,000 who come via the ID editor. The ID editor, editor takes some information from tag info and, uh, and um, helps the user uh, that way directly. And, and, and there's about 1,000 who come directly um, to tag info and, and search for something there. And if you compare that to the about 3,000 users mapping each day, uh, so 3,000 people who edit something on each given day, you see that tag info is used and uh, the, you also see that the wiki is used. People look at uh, those things to decide uh, which tags uh, they want and, and, and other information. So um, tag info is one tool, there's, there's a lot more. Um, and those tools are used by mappers uh, to decide uh, what they, they want to do. There's a lot of other tools, obviously. There's editors, there's tools to create statistics um, and um, uh, quality assurance tool and lots of special maps. So there is a lot of um, uh, ways you can inform yourself. Yes, there's a question. You have to wait till it, yeah. Oh, <laughs> speak up. There ah. we go. Uh, what is your opinion about the way to resolve the conflict, if there is a conflict, between bridge colon name and bridge underscore name? I see two ways to do that. One is, is you do it in the database by automatically fixing one to be into the other. So that's on the way in. The other way is on the way out, where you say bridge colon name is bridge underscore name. Uh, so the question was, uh, what is my opinion on the conflict between those two and how to resolve that? Uh, do you want to do that on the way in or on the way out? And I'm saying both. This is sort of what I'm saying here. There's these two groups involved. There's the mappers involved who decide uh, what data they put in. And uh, the people who take the data out uh, also decide what data they use. Um, so if somebody really wants to capture all the bridge names um, in their map, they pro should probably use both tags. Um, and if, if somebody uh, puts in the data 
uh, they have to decide, to decide which one is better. They could put in both. It's probably not a good idea to clog up our database with, with that. Um, but the experience shows, and this is kind of the point of, of all of this, is that this sorts itself out over time. And it needs a lot of time, uh, but it does. Um, so um, the tools and maps um, that I've shown, they have these superpowers in the OpenStreetMap world. If you create a tool that lots of people use, um, you help them make better decisions. Uh, you help them to improve OpenStreetMap and all of that, but you also sort of decide in a little bit what or you, you bring sort of your view of the world into, into your tool. And so other people using your tool will see your view of the world and how things are supposed to be. Um, and uh, that is also, I mean, that is difficult. And there is a, there is a uh, it, it, it means you, you have to make sure you're not doing anything um, too bad with, with this tool. Um, and there's another aspect that's important here. Um, we need this, there, or there's this evolution going on. If you come in and say, you're going to change everything, um, we start out totally new, um, we change all the tags, we change the why we do everything, um, it's not going to work because there's all these people, all these mappers who've been uh, doing it the old way and all the users of the data have been using it the old way. There's lots of... Um, pre-existing styles and maps and uh, software and all of that and that has to change and that will not change overnight so any kind of change has to be evolutionary and each step in this evolution has to make sense so whatever works now becomes accepted and not something that's a dream that might be uh, possible 10 years down the line um, so is it a democracy the mappers use the available maps, they use the tools, they inform themselves, more or less, uh, look at their own needs, um, and then they decide and they vote. They don't vote in a poll, there is no polling station or whatever, but they still vote. They vote by their actions. So maybe in a way it is a democracy. And uh, that's one reason why imports are so problematic, because they short-circuit this mechanism. Because there's just one person maybe um, importing huge amounts of data, deciding on um, a huge part of the data um, how it's supposed to look. And um, if they make the wrong decision, uh, or whatever wrong means, if they make a decision that other people don't like, uh, there's, they, they can't really change uh, what has been happening and change maybe thousands, ten, tens of thousands or instances of the bridge name or whatever it is. Um, so if you want to sort of participate in this world, um, build tools, build more tools, um, create more maps, use the data, um, and... Uh, be aware of the superpowers that you have as a toolmaker, as a map maker, and use them responsibly. And uh, talk to the mappers and uh, be patient uh, but persistent. And um, then slowly you will change the way OpenStreetMap looks and uh, improve it uh, more and more. Thank you. Right, any questions? There's a question on there. Yeah, I was just wondering, you had, um, you kind of made the statement that you thought there would be eventual consistency with these tags, that over time they would end up, for instance, in the bridge name, bridge colon name case, that eventually the community would decide on one or the other. But how often does that actually, like, do people, would somebody actually go in and change one of those bridge underscore names to bridge colon names on something that already existed? Or is it just that new data will get these new tags, but there's going to be like a subset of data that remains the old way because people aren't don't go and change tag names. Um, okay, so the question was um, 
my argument is this if eventual consistency at some point all uh, these things will converge to one tag or one solution or whatever um, and does this actually happen um, or is only new data getting uh, these new tags and uh, that is a is a very good question and I hope somebody from a university somewhere will at some uh, point make a really real data based uh, study on that to f to figure out how how much and how fast all of this works um, anecdotally I would say yes it does work um, it works uh, it works in those cases where the data is actually used for something interesting so um, Bridge name is maybe not interesting enough, um, but in those cases where somebody is is working on a specialized map, and um, or, or it doesn't have to be a map, could be a routing engine or, or whatever it is, um, it, if there are people who care for it, if there are people who care for this tag or for this type of information, for this uh, for these kind of features, um, uh, they will convince others others to work with them. And, and it does happen. I mean, we have a usable map, so somehow um, these things uh, uh, do happen, I, I would argue. There's a question there. Hello. Uh, the way I see it is uh, going forward, I think it's the presets versus imports that the, the tools will shape how the, the, the tagging goes in the future, because right now, if you go on ID, or even Jossum now, there's uh, you just search, you have your preset, and most people aren't going to tag individually. Um, so I think the tools and the decisions and the tools that are used to edit the map are going to make a big difference, but that doesn't affect necessarily the imports. So, so you, your argument is that um, the, the editors, the presets and the editors will affect this uh, mostly? Um, which is probably true for at least for sort of the standard tags. If you are if you are mapping a road these days and you want to decide uh, how to mark it as a one-way road or whatever, um, there is no discussion about that anymore. These things have been settled years ago and they have been baked into presets and you just use them and that's it. But there's huge areas where, um, where specialized data where that's not baked into presets yet, or only if you install a special plugin into the editor, um, uh, say, let's say public transport data or, or whatever it is. Um, but yes, I agree, the presets are one very important part there. They are, they, they, they are used in the tools. This is the, the tool that shapes um, how things uh, uh, will be. And that's why it's so important for the tool makers, for the people who program those editors and who create those presets, um, to make sure that they um, put something in those presets that's sort of reflecting the consensus in the community, hopefully, and not too much decide, just decide on their own um, what is best and what is what 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 isn't? So they should obviously also do this research, that as as I described here. Look at wiki uh, pages and all of that. Look at the data and decide: is this something that's settled already? Um, is this something we can bake into the tool, or is this something where we need more discussion, where where we need this to leave this more open? Open. Any other questions? Comments? Yeah. You spoke about imports being bad because it's one person uh, taking control over a large set of the data. There's a different way to do imports, and that is to use the import, the, the data set, as advisory. That's how I map New York State's um, lakes and ponds. I found a database that, that listed them all. And one by one, I went through, found the location, entered the, digitized it myself, and put the name in off of the USGS topo maps. So yeah, I worked off of a data set. I worked off of something that could have been imported, but I did it all by hand, using my judgment. Yeah, so the comment was about uh, the import and uh, import not being fully automatic, but going through sort of every step sort of 
uh, being done uh, by hand and by, by a mapper. I don't want to get into this whole import discussion. That's a, uh, that's a huge topic. And um, uh, basically, my argument here is uh, only that sort of if you are doing something automated in a large scale way, this breaks this community process. It doesn't mean that it always has to be bad. Um, there, are sure, there are lots of different cases, and um, I'm sure in some cases this process is better than others, and maybe you can have a, lot, a huge discussion uh, before do, doing the import, or maybe if you involve it in enough people or whatever. I do, I'm not saying anything in favor of this or that, I'm, but I'm... Uh, arguing that is a, is, it is a diff difficult area. Anybody else? Yeah. You've generated some graphs showing the change of tag usage over time. Are there any good tools for mappers to look at that information? Uh, <laughs> I was afraid you were asking that. Um, uh, um, so the question was, are there any good tools for mappers to uh, do something like the one graph I showed uh, with uh, user, usage of tags over time? Um, currently, there are no tools who sort of do that out of the box. Um, well, I, I have code for that, and I've never released it. It's, but even then, it would be, um, uh, would be only for programmers to use. So this is one thing which has been on my to-do list for tag info for, for, for a long time, to get this into tag info, because it obviously makes sense um, to, um, uh, to have that in there and give uh, some more information to the mappers. And uh, yeah, at some point, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, right, one question maybe in a year. Nobody going one side, yes? For the people who are making tools that consume the data, is there anything or have you thought about anything where we could identify some colloquialisms in the data? It seems like the tagging is sort of like a language in that it varies from region to region. And for people like, like I work on routing, so I need to know about how people are tagging things for the use of routing in Germany versus in South America or something like that. So just wondering about tools that could identify. I, I know you have this slide with nominatum in there and what kinds of tags they you know, they're looking for, we look for certain ones, and I'm just wondering, that can vary widely across the world. Is there some, has there been any research on that, like tools for identifying these colloquial tagging? Okay, so uh, the question was about uh, tags that are different in, uh, uh, the tag users that are different in different parts of the world, um, which is a problem sometimes in OpenStreetMap that um, some things are used universally and others aren't. and. There are not really that great tools uh, to sort of automatically do that. Tag info shows you a map um, where tags are used, um, but not exactly how those tags are used, so that's often not enough. It can give you some hints, maybe. Um, uh, I hope more people will use the projects feature of tag info to bring in their view of, of the data. Uh, but in the end, it is a lot of research that's needed in every specific case. and. If somebody has a good idea how to do that, yes, uh, we could uh, use more of that. Thank you.